Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and are you counted? And today we are going to visit with the people from census that actually do the work. And we're going to talk about why this is the most important time of your life. You must, you must, you must be counted. So that's what we're going to do today. And so let me introduce our guest. I'll start with Annie Mae. Where are you? Can you raise your hand? There she is. Anna Mae. again. <laughs> and Elizabetha. Is that, did I pronounce it right? Yes. Yes. And uh, Elizabetha is her, she's responsible for counting um, Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. Is that correct? Yes, yes, there is two of us, which is um, Charlotte Poe, our team lead for the yes. um, partnership specialist team. And um, so, her and I are um, responsible for the Native Hawaiian Pacific Island count. Now, that is a big job. Let's start with anime. Um, talk to me about what it is exactly that your group of people here in Hawaii do? What, what is it, do you, how do you count? What are you counting for? And where does all this, what happens with the money? Or okay, so, let's start at the beginning, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's been a year or almost a year since yeah. we first came to your show, Miss Marsha. And you really have navigated this journey with us, this <laughs> census journey, and it, uh, you know, supposed to end last May, and we're still here, you know, yes. due to the un unprecedented pandemic. Um, but our team actually is the Community Partnership and Engagement Team. So there's actually seven of us right now here in Oahu. Um, we work with our local government, our state government, the local government, and our um, community organizations to make sure that our hard to count populations here in Hawaii are are counted and that they are um, educated about the importance of the census. So our main um, purpose and role is really to educate and encourage our community to respond. And we have, since we started last year, we have created numerous um, hundreds of partnerships across the state of Hawaii, whether it's government, nonprofit partnerships, businesses, um, churches, faith-based organizations, um, you name it, we have um, touch base with them and to really help us and multiply the effort that the U.S. Census, census is doing. We cannot um, reach all of the communities, you know, but with the help of our partners, we were able to do um, a, a really effective outreach across the state of Hawaii um, to make sure that everyone is educated about the census and know the importance of the census. And, you know, we do it for apportionment purposes, for redistricting and also to make sure that we get our fair share of federal funds that goes to our schools, our healthcare system, our roads, um, you name it, any program that the federal uh, government is funding, um, it is based on census counts. So it's very important that we respond. And as you know, I have been campaigning for years to have everybody counted because if everyone in Hawaii is counted and you don't have to be a citizen, you don't have to have any of that, you just have to live here. As exactly. A if everyone does that, we can have a, C, a third district, CD3. Some of the states have already lost a count, so we can add a, add a congressional person, and that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful, and we shall know um, after the result of the census is, you know, calculated, and that would be nice. But yeah, it's very important for our voices in government to make sure that we are accurately counted. You don't have to be a citizen. As long as you live here in the United States, you should be counted in the census. Elizabeth, am I saying this right? Elizabeth? Yes, Elisabetta. Elisabetta. I like that. <laughs> okay. 
Now, you are from where, sweetheart? I'm originally from Samoa, um, from the territory of the U.S., which is American Samoa, and also um, have lived here since 1998. Oh, great. So, so yeah. now, you're responsible for counting people from that are Hawaiian and um, uh, Pacific Islands, right? Is that correct? Yes. yes. Um, okay. Our focus with our um, CPEP program, um, which Annie had explained, um, is the development of our partnerships within the community and also working diligently to um, ensure that partnership is um, you know, well grounded in terms of, of supporting the, the census operation within our state. So um, uh, all of us are unique in our own, um, you know, culture as well as our languages. So um, since I speak Samoan, I focus more, you know, I was um, selected to be a partnership specialist, uh, also um, pushing for the general population count, but more focused on the Pacific Island um, you know, um, um, communities. So well, even with Char, Charlotte yeah. Foy is our team lead. She's also um, Native Hawaiian, and um, her and I are also um, the ones that are uh, focusing more on the NHPI, Native Hawaiian Pacific Island communities. Yes. Well, now tell me about all of the different islands that live here, uh, Tonga, um, the Marshall Islands, the Micronesians, uh, you name it, Guam, Saipan, um, and they all have different languages. So how do you deal with that, or do they speak English fairly well? Most of them speak English um, fairly well. Um, there is a, a percentage of, of community members that needs language assistance and the U.S. Census Bureau um, have been doing such a wonderful job building those resources to help support um, our, our community members. And that's the purpose of our, of our program, our CPEP program to identify partners that are right. able to provide that assistance, that language assistance. So um, we have a Micronesian community um, with, um, you know, Marshall Islands, with different islands in the Micronesian area. So all of that population is here. So we built a strong partnership, which is part of our responsibilities as partnership specialists to build uh, a strong partnership with our community leaders, such as the Marshallese Consulate General's Office, mm -hmm. with, um, you know, Miss Isabel Silk, who heads that, you know, that office. They've been working diligently to assist us, as well as the We Are Oceania with Josie Howard and her organization. So um, the partnership within the community really helps us, like how Annie explained about looking at faith-based organizations. Uh, for example, with the Samoan community, we reached out to church leaders. You know, a bulk of our Samoan community members are, um, you know, they attend different churches within the, within the state, even the outer islands, you know, outside of Oahu, there are several churches there as well. So with the church leaders, we build that partnership and empower the community. We provide the education outreach through our program, and that supports um, the push in order yeah. to get the community to be counted. We have a strong partnership with MCO, which is the Marshallese um, Community Organization of Hawaii. And the people that are in that MCO organization are church leaders from the Marshall Islands. So, well, yes. Um, now, tell me about the language, all of those different languages. And do you, you do have someone that speaks all of them. I, I was a guest at an event, and I think most of them were Marshallese, but they, they had four different languages, so they had to interpret each one at a time. So the event went on and on and on. So do you you do have people that speak all of those myriad yeah. of languages? Yes. Um, you know, we worked with the, uh, um, the Hawaii government complete count committee, which is headed by Dr. Eugene Tien 
and in the wonderful office of DBET. And they provided brochures that are is translated, census brochures from the state level, which is translated in different languages, which includes a lot of Pacific Island languages. So um, the brochures were very useful for a lot of our education outreach. And we were able to utilize some of that lang those language materials. Even on our, um, you know, some of our partners have, you know, they translated a lot of our census materials. So when we know we're in a community where a large population of Marshallese, for example, we, we make sure that we have those um, resources and materials ready from the state level as well as our partnership, the community-based area. Yeah. Well, what about the neighbor islands? How do you, you have people, uh, partners on each island to uh, do the census on each island, do you? Annie, you, um, we do have um, our partnership specialist in the Big Island, which is um, Mr. Tim so um, Solis. Um, he's our partnership there. And we also have some of our um, CRRs. We call it CRRs. These are, um, you know, our census recruitment assistants and, and staff members that in the outer islands. I believe Maui. We do reach out to Maui from Oahu, as well as when we have um, support from our um, ACO, we, um, we do provide that assistance to those to the people living in Maui. Maui, what about Molokai, you know, those Nihihau and places like that? Yes, we've been doing some outreach. Um, Annie will share more about okay. some of the outreach because she reached out to La, La, um, Lanai as well. Lanai, yeah. So with Molokai, we have a strong um, community partnership with Queen Lilio Kalani Trust and several organizations. We even um, um, worked with our government agencies, like, for example, um, um, Department of Education. Um, our library services here in the state of Hawaii with um, the head librarian, Stacy Eldridge, has been wonderful in terms of providing assistance with our different community or areas. So um, we reached out to several organizations, um, Moloka'i as well, um, with Mi'ihau. Um, we work closely with the community college in Kauai. We understand that there's a large population of Ni'ihau community members living on Kauai. So, um, you know, our team lead, Charlotte Toy, have done um, several outreach engagements to, um, you know, develop um, MQAs to enumerate our Kauai um, residents there in uh, the Ni'ihau, I'm sorry, Ni'ihau yeah. residents. Now, for any anybody that's watching that doesn't know what we're talking about. Uh, Nihihau is a little island right off the coast of Kauai. So Kauai, Nihau. And uh, they are the ones, the, those Hawaiians speak the real Hawaiian language. <laughs> they don't have the university Hawaiian language or this other language. And the former mayor of Hawaii, which includes the, uh, was making a big, big push to have them, the original, those that speak the original Hawaiian, to come to Kauai to teach the language, to use the language. And that's just a side note, it has nothing to do with census. <laughs> I thought since we're talking about it. Uh, we have, again, for people that don't know what we're talking about. We have, what, eight major islands? And so when I talk about, I asked you about neighbor islands, that's what we're talking about. Neighbor islands, Hawaii, Nihihau, Lanai, Molokai, Oahu, um, Maui, and the Big Island. Did I leave out anybody? Did I leave out an island? Huh? Yes, those are all the islands that we have. Yeah. Yes, and and language is very important, and we've been working really hard to ensure that the assistance and and the language um, the support is provided for our community members. We even have Hawaiian um, translated brochures, and 
Um, we're so grateful to the the, um, the state office, the DBET state office, which um, worked with community members to to help translate all of our census materials in our native, you know, the, the Pacific Island languages, as well as all of the languages in the state of Hawaii. We live in an ethnically diverse society, and even in Hawaii, you know, it's a lot of, of cultures and languages, and that is so is so unique with the work that we do our uh, another unique thing about it we establish partners in the community or in the government level and that's how you know um, networks and be yes. able to identify the resources out there to support the census operation and that is the most beautiful um, you know um, thing about working in this work, the census, and it's helping us. And what we are encouraging our communities not to wait. This is the time for everyone to respond right now because it's um, very important for all of us. And we matter in terms of our own um, community and our own cultures, and we're, we are unique, but we do matter to be counted in the census. Oh, now I have one question. Speaking of languages, uh, do we have pigeon? Now, anybody translate to pigeon? Well, we no? have our native Hawaiian community members that are fluent pigeon speakers. Pigeon, yes. Yes. We <laughs> I have love a- it. We actually have a strong partnership with the University of Hawaii, um, you know, um, Native Hawaiian, um, you know, organizations. Um, We also have, um, we've established a partnership with our, um, you know, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, Kamehameha, um, Mm -hmm. CNHA with the Council of Native Hawaiian Advancement. Actually, I, I want to mention in this show that the coordinator uh, or the coordination of all of our Native Hawaiian Pacific Island organizations is under the CNHA, which is the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement. Yes. And, um, we, didn't we have somebody from them on your show on the show? Richard, right? Yes. Richard Medeiros yes. is yes. our coordinator for the NHPI Complete Count Committee. And yes. he's been doing such a wonderful job, you know, working with our organizations in the community to inform them and also to educate them. We even hosted some um, education outreach that is done in, uh, you know, people's native language. Like for our Samoan community, if we had to lay, relay the message of sense, the census message, to our leaders, we have to, you know, use Samoan language. What about now the uh, people that are still in, not not the ones in Hawaii, but the Samoan uh, population in Samoa? What about them? You have special yeah. people that go to Samoa to do the work? Yeah, that's a very good question, uh, Marsha, because it brings us to um, an issue that the Census Bureau have come around with in terms of working with our community. Um, We, um, you know, through our community outreach, our census um, engagement activities, um, working with the food distribution and some of the partners in our community um, um, organizations, we we realized that there are a lot of our stranded residents from outer, from, you know, islands of the Pacific. They are stranded here in the state of Hawaii, some in the mainland. What do you mean stranded? What what do you mean? um, When COVID happened. Oh, COVID. Oh, I I, I understand. COVID, you know, um, the borders of of the islands have been closed. Yes. So uh, we are trying to help some of the residents in terms of um, assisting them with their questions and even, um, you know, the, their concerns of not being counted. Um, so we are able to connect with, uh, with the coordinators from the census coordinator in, in the state, in the U.S. territory of American Samoa. Um, Jason Gop, Gop is the coordinator there. And he's working collaboratively with our leaders here, as well as our regional office, to communicate um, the message to our residents that are, 
here, since borders are closed in the islands due to COVID-19, so they are able to be counted. So one of the things that they had mentioned um, is for American Samoa census, they have to do it face-to-face. -face. It's all paper-based. So it's a great idea that they um, share and communicate it with our leaders so that we can assist our residents here, our people that are here in Hawaii. So they, they, they've seen the commercials. They are... You know, they've seen the, the signs and everywhere at the stores and even um, banners, and they, they asked the, the question. So it's a good thing that they, they know census is important and they yes. want to be counted. So yes. um, I just received the, the, you know, the estimate number of Marshallese that are stuck here in the state of Hawaii, which is over 200. And even out in, you know, and there's more about a hundred out in the, in other states outside of Hawaii. So with the American Samoa, through our um, community outreach with, um, with food distribution, uh -huh. helping the community through food distribution, they were able, um, we were able to work with a group of um, American Samoans under the um, two Fatasi um, Alliance for American Samoa Community. Mm -hmm. This organization was established because of all the people that were stuck here due to COVID, and they, um, you know, were able to send us, um, you know, information that there is over a thousand of uh, community members that are. Um, you know, um, stranded in terms of because of COVID, <laughs> not able to go home because the uh, the borders are closed. So, yeah. So, um, what do we do as the Census Bureau? Mm. You know, when they ask the question, when they inquire about how to respond, we have that communication with our coordinator in American Samoa Territory. Um, ensuring that we are counting our population, the, the ones in the U.S. territory that are here in the state of Hawaii and outside of the mainland. Now tell me, um, the, the seven territories, we have 50 states plus seven territories. What are those territories? We have Guam. Uh, uh -huh. We have American Samoa as another territory. Um, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, um, the Northern Marianas, and um, do I have it all? I have two D.C., more. District of Columbia. District of Columbia. That's and six. There's one more. We have one more. Um, Samoa, American Samoa. Yeah, we, we count yeah, American Samoa. American Samoa. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking at a truncated map of the Pacific and all of these islands, Commonwealth of Northern Marianas, Republic of Balao, Federated States of Micronesia, Republic of the Marshall Islands, Republic of Kiribati, Republic of Nauru. And that is 50 thousand islands. My God. Oh. And so not all of them are territories, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, let's talk about, we cut, we got every, oh, oh, the one community we didn't talk about, and that is Chinatown. I know Robert has been on several times and he's really working on it. Uh, do you know how it's, do, do, Annie May, you know anything about how that's going? Actually, yes. Um, Robert has been so, you know, amazing. Um, we're so happy that, you know, he is a part of our team and, you know, so he, you know, he can speak to our um, Chinese uh, yes. community members. And I, I always look at our, our census tracts, and these census tracts are doing well. Um, Chinatown is doing well. Um, 
some of our areas in Waikiki, where there are a lot of um, vacant units, are a little bit problematic because, again, the vacant units, kind nobody can respond. So it doesn't, you know, it, it affects our initial self-response right now. But I am really happy to say that our census tracts in those areas in Chinatown, except for one or two, are actually doing well. It's actually the areas in Waikiki that we have a lot of census tracts that are not um, well, yeah. responding very well. But uh, now how are we doing overall for oh. your territory? So overall in the state of Hawaii, we have a self-response rate of 62.4%. And then we have a door-to-door. -door. We are also measuring our door-to-door -door, um, enumeration rate right now. This is uh, the non-response follow-up where our enumerators are doing the really important and you know hard job right now of going and knocking on doors of uh, every household who hasn't responded yet. And that is at 36.2%. So um, if we combine our self-response rates and our door-to-door -door enumeration rates, we have a total combined as of yesterday, 98.6% of households Wonderful. are already enumerated in Hawaii. Yes. So very good. Yay. Yeah, we're, we are in our last push. Elizabeth has been all over the island displaying our banners. Um, everyone, um, uh, Jesus has been working with, you know, the Spanish community. And um, of course, our uh, Robert with the Chi Chinatown community, Chinese community, and with our lawmakers as well. So everyone is like in the last push of the census as well. So and shout out to Sharon, our Japanese yes. community. Yes. So yeah, every and Tim over at the Big Island is always out every day because he's able to do mobile questionnaire assistance. So we are just um, you know in our last phase. And thank you to all our partners who have journeyed with us uh, through this whole census um, journey. Yeah. <laughs> which we has been we only have, I have a minute left. Okay. So well, yeah, quick. thank you, <laughs> Ms. Marsha. No, no, no. Thank you so much. Real quick, tell us, now that you collect all of this stuff, mm -hmm. where does it go and what happens? And we only have a minute, so tell us. Yeah, once so, we collect it, you have collected all this, then what? So, you know, it goes in our secure systems and it's going to be reviewed for completeness and accuracy. Um, and it's going to be processed and uh, we will submit the, the, the apportionment counts after it's done. Okay, then it goes to the president? The president. Uh -huh. That's the next step after the processing of the data. Yeah. Okay, well, again... Um, <laughs> It's been a pleasure spending this year with you, and I Same hope here. this isn't our last time. I hope you don't shut down before we get <laughs> oh. to do this again. <laughs> but again, thank you both. It's been a pleasure spending the year with you, and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Thank, thank you, you very so much, Ms. Marsha. An uh, honor. Thank you. Bye.